Hello there, and welcome to another special edition Citizen Academy video. Now, in this video, we have a real special ship to analyze. This is going to be about the Endeavor Science Research Vessel. This is a friggin' amazing spaceship. I love this ship. So to describe it briefly, the Endeavor is a really huge science research-based ship that has a ton of modularity that comes along with it. For example, you can attach a really cool-looking deep space telescope array uh, to it, or you can have a medical facility for helium pilots that have been uh, hurt during space battles, for example. It has this really cool particle accelerator that can be used to modify various weapons and such. Oh, and there are also these really cool-looking um, biodomes for doing agricultural uh, research. These are really, really cool. I think these are the ones I plan to buy. And then there are all sorts of uh, miscellaneous science research pods and whatnot you can get for it. This is going to be an amazing ship. I think it's, this is going to add a lot to the game. And this ship is currently on concept sale until October 10th, 2015. And if you want to learn a lot more details about the ship, go on to the RSI website and check it out. So in this video, what I want to do is give you guys an idea of the uh, scale of this ship in really, really great detail. So first of all, how does the Endeavor measure up? So what are the uh, dimensions of the ship? How does it compare to other ships in the Star Citizen universe? And so on. Now, we know that the Endeavor is 200 meters long. So what I did was I extracted this picture of the ship from another image that was on the RSI website. And I laid down a grid on top that has uh, 10 meter grid increments to measure out for exactly 200 meters, which is the length of the Endeavor. And then using this, we can calculate the various dimensions of all the other parts of the uh, ship. And then we can scale other ships down to the right scale for comparison to the Endeavor. And here you can see some of the measurements that I came up with. So with this image, you can get a really good idea of what the scale of the ship is. I mean, if you look at uh, that part in the center section in the side view, you can see at one point that it is 52 feet high. Now that is almost the height of a five-story building. So you can see here that this is a pretty big ship. Now by using that same grid that I showed you before, I can scale down other ships that already exist and compare those to the size of the Endeavor. So for example, you can see here the Retaliator as it compares to the Endeavor. It's a uh, pretty large ship by comparison. And it actually makes the Endeavor seem not quite so huge. However, when you get down to some of the smaller ships like the Redeemer, which is 37 meters long, and the Freelancer Max, which is, depending on which one you get, is 32 meters long, and then we get down to the smaller ships, like the Gladius, which is only 20 meters long. Now the Endeavor starts to look really big. And then when you get down to the Merlin, which is only 12 meters long, the Endeavor seems freaking huge. Now, there is a uh, front section of this ship called the Explorer, and that detaches from the uh, main ship uh, something like this. And we can do the same kind of measurements on that as well. So here's the Explorer, and with that grid, we can see that it is around 75 meters long and around 47 meters wide. Now to get an idea of the scale of this, compared to the Retaliator, the Retaliator is almost the same size as the Explorer. All right, so now I want to get into something that was not uh, presented on the RSI website regarding the size of the biodomes optional pod system that you can get for the Endeavor. And about the only sense of scale you can get for those is with this image right here, but it doesn't have any kind of dimensions to it. So I use that same trick with that uh, grid system, 
and I figured out the width of the uh, area where the dome pod attaches onto the ship, which is right in this area. And then I took the space that exists between the two docking ports on the domes, which you can see here, and I flipped it 90 degrees and attached it to the uh, main ship, and I scaled it down until it fit onto those uh, docking ports on the Endeavor. Then I laid the red grid on top of that, so now everything is the same scale. And then from this, I can calculate the size of the uh, domes, and I came up with these numbers right here. Now, the question that I was trying to answer here is, how much farmable land do each of these domes have? Which I can then use to uh, make a choice of whether I want to buy one set of domes or two sets. So with this information, we can calculate what the surface area on the inside of the dome is. And we can't do this in any real precise manner, but we can get sort of a general idea of how much surface area there is inside the dome. And we also have this picture that shows what the inside of the uh, dome is. Uh, so we can get a rough idea of how much of the area in the dome is actually used for whatever kind of farming you might want to do. And again, keep in mind, this is all in concept phase. So none of this that I am uh, about to show you is like carved in stone. It's all still being developed. So these domes could end up being larger or smaller by the time the ship is actually uh, ready. So here's my little game crafting experiment. All right, so we know that the surface area of the dome looks something like this when it is scaled to the same size as the Endeavor. And we know based on that picture and based on some uh, calculations that, that I made based on the image of all the uh, farming that the actual areas covered with soil look something like this. And then we can throw in some uh, plants here just to make it look pretty. And from this we can see that the overall farmable area is around 24 meters in diameter. Now there is a little pond area in the center there that you can see. And I am assuming here that the uh, little narrow ring of soil around the perimeter is roughly twice the surface area of that pond area. So that part will be included in my calculations as well. So the area of a circle is of course pi r squared and we know the radius is 39.375 feet and so from that we can calculate that the soil surface area is 4,870 square feet. And if you have all four of the domes we're talking around 19,500 feet, roughly. And again, that's not a precise number. This, you know, th These are all very general calculations, so keep that in mind. So with all four of the domes, you have a little less than half an acre of farmable land, which for doing um, experimentation on plants, that sort of thing, and having like... Uh, specialized rare plant farming going on. That really is a pretty fair amount of farmland to work with. So what I did next was I wanted to see what the Endeavor looks like with all four of the domes attached in sort of a uh, side view and a top view. And I came up with something like this. Now, something that I noticed about this configuration is if you look at these two areas right here on the uh, rear of the Explorer where the engines are located, you can see that if the Explorer uh, vessel were to fire its engines, it would be firing them right into the side of those two domes right there. And I bring this up because for some reason I thought that you could fire the Endeavor's engines as well as the main engines in the back of the ship to give you a bit of a uh, extra boost, you know, s some extra power. But apparently, when you have the domes attached to the front, those engines become non-functional. And I also did some experiments with some of the other uh, pods that you can attach to that front section. And a lot of them also get in the way of the engines firing. But, you know, that, that really isn't any kind of a problem because, as you can see from this view of the back of the Endeavor, it's got some huge friggin' engines. All right, now let's talk about the hangar pod. 
which attaches to the bottom of the uh, endeavor. And the question here that I've seen on the RSI forums a lot and on Reddit is, what ships can you fit inside there? And how many ships can you fit inside that hangar? And the idea here is, can the endeavor be used as a pocket carrier as opposed to a uh, full-blown one like the huge, humongous bangle carrier? So I set out to do some experiments using the same scaling method with that red grid. And I came up with the measurements of the hangar, which was done before the uh, question and answer uh, post was put on the RSI website, which gave the actual dimensions of the uh, hangar pod. But my dimensions were pretty darn close. But in this video, I'm using the actual data from the RSI website. So as you can see here, the hangar is around 65 meters long. 30 meters wide and around 10 meters high. Now, I've heard that this hangar pod may end up being a little bit wider than this, so maybe uh, 45, 50 meters wide, perhaps. But um, again, I'm, I'm just basing all this on what information we have presented to us at this particular moment in this ship's development. So we know the size of the floor plan of the hangar, and we can use that same red grid to make a little footprint of the hangar that you can see here. And on the uh, RSI website, they uh, state that you can fit two cutlass reds inside the hangar. So I scaled down that ship to the same uh, exact scale as the Endeavor overall. And wouldn't you know it, it fits in there really, really well. But the big question is, what other ships will fit inside? Well, you can see here, you can count out the retaliator. Now, maybe when the hangar is made wider, you'll be able to fit perhaps one retaliator in there. But as things stand today, it's not going to fit. Now, you can easily fit a redeemer in there, as the hangar exists at this time. And you can kind of, sort of, fit two freelancers in there. I mean, it's a really tight squeeze. I'm not actually sure about this because a lot depends on how skilled you are as a pilot in actually maneuvering your uh, freelancer in there without knocking against the sides of the hangar. I mean, that is a pretty tight fit. Now, the Aegis Gladius is around 20 meters long or so, so you can fit around four of those in the hangar as it currently exists. And again, like I said, this might not be a realistic configuration. I think uh, you can fit two in there very easily. Uh, four might be a bit of a stretch. Now for the little tiny Merlin, you can fit a whopping 12 of those guys in here with a uh, little bit of extra room to spare. Now, what other ships can you fit inside there? Well, I did some more calculations on lots of other ships, and I came up with this. So the uh, Aurora is 18 meters long, so you can fit around three of those in there. You can put in uh, three Mustangs, three Hull A's, three Avengers. Um, there, I'm not sure uh, about the uh, length because it's being redesigned, so it might be just a little bit bigger than that, perhaps, when the new design comes out. We just don't know yet. Uh, with the Gladiator, you can fit two of those in there. Ah, now here's a real cool one. You can have two Super Hornets in that hangar. That is going to add a lot of defensive capabilities to this ship. You can add any of the uh, 300 series. You can add two of those. You can add one Vanguard to this. That's going to be pretty cool. Uh, you can fit one Hull B. And the Constellation, I am not sure. Uh, that's why I have a question mark there. So in theory, since it's only around 61, 62 meters long, you could fit one in. But being able to maneuver it in there safely and because it's such a large, bulky ship, I am I have my doubts, but I wanted to include that in there just for fun. So there you go, a nice look at the Endeavor. I hope this video gives you a better idea of the scale of the ship and how other ships compare to it and the size of the uh, biodomes and the hangar to give you a better idea of, of what the actual gameplay is going to be with this ship. And if you have anything you would like to say about this video, please do leave me a comment. And if you really want to show support for my channel, please click on that little red subscribe button down below there. 
Until next time, this is Citizen Academy wishing all of you fame and fortune in the verse.